Washington. I want to bring in our panel, Washington Post Chief Correspondent Dan Balls, USA Today Washington Bureau Chief and Native Kansan Susan Page, and Washington Post columnist Eugene Robinson. I welcome all. Uh, Dan Balls, as we think back of the bipartisanship that Bob Dole did represent, working in 1983 with Pat Moynihan on the Social Security Compromise, working with George McGovern on nutrition and agricultural help, the, the food lunches, working, of course, with Tom Harkin from Iowa uh, on the Americans for Disability Act, a time long gone. Andrea, it certainly seems like it is a time long gone. Um, Bob Dole was a combination of many things as a, as a human being. Uh, he was certainly a partisan, a partisan Republican. But as a senator, he knew that the role of people in politics was to try to make life better for, for people who needed that. Uh, and he was prepared to work across the lines of politics in order to get those things done. And that is a that is a quality that is missing today from our politics. And I think uh, on a day that we remember Senator Dole's service, not simply as a senator or presidential candidate, um, but as a, uh, as a veteran, um, I think it behooves us all to think about whether there is a way to get some of that back that we have lost. And I'm seeing Chris Dodd from Connecticut, others who had worked with him in the Senate for so many years. Uh, Susan Page, your fellow Kansan today is going to get tributes similar to ones we've seen for John McCain and past presidents of the cathedral. Uh, what does this mean to the man who returned to Russell, Kansas? He had been, as Tom Brokaw described him in the Washington Post today, an Adonis, a high school athlete, a star, wanting to become a surgeon. And then, of course, you know, disabled for life. <laughs> Two weeks before the end of the war in Europe and finding himself alongside a bed in the Veterans Hospital in Battle Creek, Michigan, with Danny Inouye. <laughs> Two later, you know, from Hawaii, they became senators. Of course, a great, a great honor to be uh, this, to have this service at the cathedral as it was yesterday uh, when he was lying uh, in the place of honor in the Capitol Rotunda. But I have to think the service that would have meant the most to Bob Dole is the one at St. Mary's Church in Russell on Saturday morning. It, you know, Bob Dole had a certain sharp edge. He could be pretty caustic, but he would be moved to tears even in the final years of his life, remembering what the people of Russell did for him when he came back from war with such grievous, grievous injuries, 39 months of rehabilitation. They took him back in. They elected him to local office. They sent him to Congress. They participated in sending him to the Senate uh, to represent Kansas. And remember, I remember his first announcement of his first of three presidential bids in Russell. What an emotional occasion that was. Nearly everybody in town came out to send off Bob Dole. And we've seen the bipartisanship. We you know, see that Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell sitting next to each other because of the protocol there in the, in the Senate, uh, now in the cathedral with Speaker Pelosi. Uh, just yesterday at the Capitol Rotunda, really touching tributes from both McConnell, understandably from his party, but from Chuck Schumer. Eugene, and now we see you know, Dick Cheney in the cathedral with Dan Quayle and Dan, Bill Clinton. Right. But they could not be further, farther apart in politics. Uh, it seems like another time or another country, <laughs> or maybe both. Um, uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it shows how much things have changed. I mean, and, and, and frankly, how much the Republican Party has changed. It is a different party. It is a party that right now has no legislative agenda, no legislative proposals at all. It has had no platform for the last election at all. I mean, it, 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 um, it, it's a party that, uh, um, that, that used to have a set of beliefs that, that Bob Dole shared deeply and fought for fiercely. Uh, and, um, uh, and it's a very, very different um, party. It's a very, very different time. Uh, and it, it's, it's hard to imagine today's leaders um, uh, behaving this way. <laughs> you know, 
watching these images of the cathedral, I was just there last Sunday, and having attended so many of these funerals, memorial services, I was there with my husband for Handel's Messiah because the National Cathedral is a treasure in Washington, and it's so suiting. There's Richard Shelby, of course, of Alabama. It's so, so suit, suitable that it is there for these moments of state, but also for the community, obviously for religious services, but also for the music, the glorious music. We see Ted Cruz next to Amy Klobuchar chatting, and then uh, that's Jackie Clegg Dodd next to Chris Dodd as the camera pulls back. And we hear some of the hymns. You see Mitch McConnell again in the front row. So do Bill demonstrations Clinton. of national unity like this help moving forward, or do they just remind us of what we've lost? I want to ask you, because I think it was Bob Dole's last comments were in USA Today, you at the Bureau Chief, and reflect on some of his thoughts about the bipartisanship that we've lost. Well, I, I interviewed uh, Bob Dole uh, two days before his 98th birthday in July, um, one of, certainly one of the last interviews he did. I don't know if it was the very last one or not. Um, and he was, number one, in great mental shape, very interested in what was going on, but alarmed by the direction of our politics. And, you know, he had stood up for Donald Trump. He had gone to the con Cleveland Convention for Trump, the only one of the former Republican presidential nominees to do so. He voted for Trump again uh, for real election, but he told me that he felt trumped out uh, and I think worried about the direction that the party was going. And he specifically took Trump to task for arguing, making the false argument that the election had been stolen from him, the 2020 election. He said, Dole said there had been no evidence of fraud and that Giuliani and Trump had failed to provide evidence of that. So that was a break with Trump that he had not, I think, made clear before. In fact, my last interview with Senator Dole was at the Republican convention in Cleveland, and he was defending President Trump, and there had been so much controversy, and there were the never-Trumpers who had tried to block the nomination, and even after Access Hollywood tape was revealed um, uh, in October of the year, there were even some last-minute attempts to take the nomination away from him. Uh, Dan Balls, but the fact that he stood up for Trump up to the end. And in a previous interview in 2015, it was one of the first times he said he was going to support Donald Trump. And I remember being in his office here in Washington and interviewing him for my program here and how surprised I was, Dan, that he was standing with Donald Trump when so many more traditional Republicans were not. Dan? It is a bit of a conundrum, but I think it goes back to the issue of the makeup of Bob Dole, which is he was a loyal and partisan Republican throughout his life, even as he was able to work with Democrats and people with whom he disagreed, people with whom he disagreed within his own party. I mean, when in the year that he became the Republican nominee, 1996, he had gone through a period in which Newt Gingrich uh, and the rebels in the House had, had essentially taken over the Republican Party. And in many ways, Bob Dole was a bit of an outcast, even though he was the nominee of the party. Um, I, I remember uh, traveling with him in 2014 when he went back to Kansas to say thank you to people. He went to every county in, uh, in Kansas to say thank you to people. And we talked about his relationship with Gingrich. and. He acknowledged that it had been very, very difficult, but he said, you know, I called him at one point and I said, you know, let's let's bury the hatchet. We need to get over this. But his support for Donald Trump, I think, flowed out of that belief that he was a Republican and a Republican was loyal and a Republican supported whoever was the nominee. I think it's very important what, what Susan said about the interview in which he made a break with Trump over the, the, the false claim of a stolen election. I think that that was an effort on his part basically to get on the right side of history on that question.